Welcome back everyone, I'm the Depressed Dior and this is Madara. So, there's some thoughts and theory crafting and things like that, because the game really does open up once you get through the mast. I, d I think I have an idea what I want to do with Remy, but for right now I think the War Axe is kind of the, her best bet. Um, I eventually need to get her stuff that has uh, a casting improvement, uh, because if she is going to go summoning, um, I would like to actually have a better casting die for them. Uh, my previous attempt, um, I had decent damage dice, but her, the casting dice were always purple, <laughs> so I'm hoping to do a little bit better this time around. In any case, um, we're going to have to go through a lot of story though first, so let's get that started, shall we? Uh, this here is Kezia Arson. So the, I believe this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Nightingale's mother. All right, let's see. Path of Citizenship. Never in her life had Nightingale been so happy to leave the Institute behind. More than once she caught herself skipping and she had to slow herself back into a walk. I have to admit, I expected it to be harder, Rook said, but I'm not complaining. If the monsters in the, in the wild are going to be anything like that, I think we're prepared for, li for life on Madara. Zeke's contribution to their overall dignity was the absence of a cigarette. Though Nightingale caught one palm behind one of his fingers whenever she saw his left hand. I'm just glad all the studying made a difference, as he got it. It would suck to spend two more years in school. As they reached the courtyard, Nightingale was surprised by just how many people were waiting outside. She noticed that a lot, uh, noticed that a lot of eyes were on them, and tried not to look too self-conscious. She supposed that when royalty did something like this, everyone paid attention. The crowd outside was mostly made up of the parents and families of hopeful graduates clapping and embracing their children. Nightingale's own Madaran present parents uh, reached them first. Queen Kezia crossed the distance in a few quick strides and scooped her into a tight hug. Nightingale? But Mom! Despite how delicate the queen looked, Nightingale found the hug so tight she had trouble breathing. Good to see you too. Do you have any idea how long it's been since uh, someone scored it that well? Kezia really stared, the one hand still lingered on her shoulder. King Balthazar stood on his wife's other side, bright robe fluttering a little in the breeze. He didn't reach out to embrace her as, a, as the queen had, had done, but he did nod with obvious respect. You are credit to the family. My hope for your potential was clearly well placed. Of course, your companions deserve equal credit. He looked past her to first to Zeke. I have come to expect quality from the Zhang house, and you have not disappointed. Thank you, Your Grace, Zeke bowed. Nightingale got out of the way, gesturing eagerly at the members of the team she didn't know before the test. Rook Lars, if I'm not mistaken. Balthazar extended a hand to Rook. For all, his aside, for all his size, Rook went pale and rigid. He could only nod. Your performance is to be commended. I suspect Alinea may come to know your family better in the coming years. I hardly deserve such praise, Rook said, bowing low. It, it was an honor to take the mask alongside your daughter. Balthazar's smile faltered a little as he finally turned to Remy. Remy squirmed under their look and did an awkward curtsy. Your grace, she muttered. Balthazar forced a smile and then cleared his throat, holding his arm out. Queen Kezia nodded and stepped forward. She offered each of them an envelope. The graduation ceremony is tonight. I look forward to seeing each of you there. They didn't wait for a response, but strode away into the crowd. As soon as Nightingale's parents disappeared, three more people hurried over. A stern-looking woman was the first to arrive. She was wearing a formal dress, but a slightly more relaxed smile. Nightingale recognized her as Ida Young, Zeke's mother. Balthazar told me how well you scored. I was pleasantly surprised. Congratulations. She offered a single, delicate hand. Zeke took it. Thank you, he replied. There was no missing the family resemblance between them. It was a cooperative effort. My contribution were, were only a part of our success. All Linnea knows by now, Ida said, a little quieter. Your success breeds confidence badly needed when the, the future is so uncertain. She looked up, inclining her head just slightly to Nightingale. In the life waiting outside those, these gates, every success belongs to the people. You have, been, have given them something to celebrate. Nightingale had a little trouble holding herself, as Ida Young uh, seemed to expect. It was just the mast. Everyone had to take it. Plenty of students did as well as us. I just smiled faintly. It is still evident uh, evidence that Elenia's ruling families have the strength to lead. 
Nightingale nearly jumped as Ida abruptly tucked her son close up for a hug, despite all the people watching. Nightingale retreated a little, looking away as Ida whispered something into his ear. Zeke smiled, but he didn't manage to say anything before Ida broke apart and vanished into the crowd with a graceful flutter of her gown. Just a few feet away, there was uh, nothing at all. Uh, there was nothing at all of uh, forced dignity in the way uh, Rook's parents embraced him. His, her, his mother seemed so overwhelmed she could barely speak. I'm just so proud. You know who that man was, right? His father added. King Balthazard. He, sat, he tried to sound as casual. I guess it, it is pretty amazing. King Balthazar recognized her own son. His, his mother hugged him again, though not so tight this time. We couldn't be prouder. When she let go, uh, go, his father patted him on the back. We'll still miss you at the farm, but you've got more in store uh, for you than weeding and mending fences. Thanks. I, I don't need to exaggerate, though. I'm sure it's not. Oh, it is. His mother cut him off. The captain of the King's Guard wanted to have a word with you, tonight, before the graduation party. Really? Rook tried to hide a smile, but his grin widened despite his effort. All right, I'll say goodbye to my friends and we can take off. While the others were preoccup preoccupied speaking with their parents, Remy was alone, staring awkwardly at the slip of paper with her grade. She shuffled her feet, retreating a step or two every time uh, she thought nobody was looking. If she could only make it to the street, she could slip away without seeming too awkward. Hey! Nightingale jumped, wrapping her arms around Remy so tight uh, she was gasping for air. You're coming to the graduation tonight, right? Nightingale let go, flashing her own invitation near Remy's face. She only grunted in response. Where's your dad? Nightingale asked, looking around them. He's not coming, Remy said. Oh, uh, that means you're in the dorm by yourself tonight? Nightingale trailed off. But maybe you'd like to come with me instead. I'm staying with Zeke's family. You could probably hang out with us until the party. I, uh... Remy glanced briefly back at the Institute. Your parents didn't seem to like me. I, I saw how they acted when they found out I was in your t on your team. Yeah, I don't really care, Nightingale said dismissively. What good is being a princess if I can't choose my own friends? You want to hang out or not? Remy smiled. Sure, that sounds nice. Oops, sorry. Skip this. Uh, it's down here. The graduation. After a day of careful preparation, they finally arrived in Millennia's biggest ball ballroom, packed so full of students and their families uh, in that in some sections there was standing room only. Nightingale shifted uncomfortably in her gown, trying to ignore all the eyes on her. Being a princess is way less awesome than it is in the movie, she thought. Dozens of people uh, she'd never met made their way over to the table to offer congratulations in polite words, which she, she accepted with a diminishing supply of grace. How, how many of the complete strangers accosting her were doing the same for the other graduates? Nightingale glanced down at the ta ta uh, table seated in rows on the lower level of the ballroom, wishing she could be uh, sitting with the other students. They were having a good time uh, with their own families, unbothered by the constant barrage of the pompous elite. And that is N... -ni I cannot pronounce that. N... -ni no... Any old net? <laughs> I can't, oh, whatever. It's one of the Zhang families. It looked like Zeke got uh, uh, about as much as of it as she did, though he was less graceful about accepting it. Remy received only confused or suspicious looks by the other royalty. Between a break of compliments on her graduation, Nightingale saw a familiar face move, uh, move shift in the crowds nearby. I think I see Rook down there, Nightingale said, pointing out. Remy's eyes flickered, followed her following her gesture into the crowd. Follow me. Nightingale grabbed Remy's hand and waded through the crowd, passing between tables pi uh, piled high with dignified hors d'oeuvres and uninteresting drinks. Rook was standing only a few feet from a raised platform in the center, chatting animatedly with a boy with giant wings hacking, uh, hanging from his back. Hey, Nightingale waved. I was planning on introducing you guys to Khufu tonight. Looks like you've already met. Why are you... Uh, why are you waiting beside the demiurge table? If Rook got in invited to join before she did, she'd probably flip out after congratulating him, obviously. She could think of no other explanation for why Rook was waiting at the table with the rest of the demiurge. Most other uh, ordinary citizens would hardly choose to sit with the king's personal guard. If they invited Rook, maybe I've got a chance too, Nightingale thought excitedly. Let me guess, this is a friend from Earth? Remy asked from behind her. 
Koof is grinned slyly at her. Are you telling everyone about our high school shenanigans? I thought we agreed. No blackmail. I mean, not everything. Nightingale grinned back. That doesn't mean I don't. I, I have to pretend I don't know you. You didn't say he had wings. Remy reached out, extending one hand. They're gorgeous. Wing buddies. Goofy held out his hand for a high five. Remy jumped up and smacked it. And now your buddies. I introduce. I should introduce you. In sorry, I should introduce you. Kufu, this is Remy. Remy, same but backwards. They exchanged a few pleasantries, though Remy was suddenly bubbling with energy. I bet you you use all those all the time, don't you? Don't uh, stay trapped down here on the ground. Sure do. Kufu said, spreading his wings as much as he could in the pack seat. Occasionally, I have to bail out friend uh, out out my friends. They do stupid things like climb without safety gear. You know how it is. Like that was my fault. Nightingale slapped him. Sure, high school uh, stories are banned, but Nadara stories are fair game, I see how it is. Kufu lowered his head in mock deference. Forgive me, I, a princess of Alenia would make no mistakes. The princess of Alenia also can't attend a good party. Zeke interjected, emerging from the crowd with a sparkling cocktail in one hand. Now my uncle, he knows how to have fun. Too bad we're stuck here. And this is Balthazar. Someone tapped her on the shoulder and Nightingale turned, half expecting another total stranger to waste more of her time with, a hit, with empty congratulations instead it was Shayla's. Congratulations on graduating, Nightingale. I knew you could do it. Shayla's hugged her tightly, much more affectionate uh, than she'd been during the test. Yeah, yeah. Nightingale pushed herself free. She glanced around, searching the nearby crowd. Hey, have you seen Anto... I cannot pronounce that. I used to be able to. Now I can't. Antonette? Antoinette. There we go. That is how you pronounce it. Antoinette. Uh, hey, have you seen Antoinette? Uh, the other J Jongs are here. I hope you, I was hoping to say hi. Uh, she isn't here, unfortunately. A Antoinette is off doing her Pirates of the Caribbean thing. Nightingale lowered her voice conspiratorially. Lady Ida snaps at Zeke for using the wrong salad fork, but her daughter gets to be a pirate? Privateer. Shale's corrected. She seemed to, to deflate a little, sighing. And that's, uh... She struggled for a moment, then shrugged. Mm, complicated. I'm sure it is, Nightingale said. I'd love to know the secret, know her secret. Obstinance, Shayla muttered. Her father was the only one who she listened to. With him gone, I'd have never figured out how to control her. Luckily, Zeke d doesn't give her much trouble. Yeah, Zeke shrugged. I never see her either. God knows that I've heard Ida talk enough about her. I probably know her better than Shayla's. Well, she has the right idea. I'd love to be a pirate. Nightingale then excitedly turned. Remy! She reached out and grabbed uh, at her new friend's wrist and pulled her forward. This is my sister, Shayla's. Nice to meet you again, Princess. Uh, Remy frowned, looking confused. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to curtsy or bow or take your hand. Shayla shrugged. If Nightingale invited you, no need for formalities. Uh, yes, Prince Shalis. Remy stutter uh, stuttered. I hope that isn't a problem. Yeah, Nightingale said, putting a hand on her hip. I hope it isn't a problem. Shalis shrugged ambivalently. Mom and Dad would probably say something different, but I've never had the same mind for politics. I say just be friends with whoever. Not unless it's me, Khufu stepped up, taking Shalis's hand with a respective nod. Princess? Pleasure to see you again. She returned his polite smile. I hope the Zhongs have been keeping you busy. Balthazar didn't want me uh, around his awesome daughter. I can't imagine why. Kufu fist bumped uh, Nightingale without taking his eyes off Shaelis. Sometimes I think Balthazar is hoping I don't come back from the missions he sends me on. Nightingale squealed nervously, or squeaked nervously. He wouldn't do that, would he? And here's Kufu. He's got some badass wings. Shayla's only smiled. Rook's a lucky man, Kufu said, glancing back towards the towering shape behind him, uh, behind them, where Rook was deep in conversation with other Demiurge. Nightingale watched him with envy. So they're going to train him, then? I, I don't know what Rook could have done that I didn't... Nightingale fell si uh, silent abruptly at the approach of two more opposing figures scattering the crowd before them. King Balthazar and her older brother, Yol, the heir apparent, entered the ballroom. Uh, Yell walked at the lead, his face as sharp as the suit he wore. Good work, little sister. He didn't wait for her response, continue on to the 
a table where Queen Kezia was already saving several seats. King Balthazar was the picture of regal bearing, his armor glittered and polished, and his beard immaculately trimmed. What he lacked in grace he made up in confidence, only accentuated by the scars on his face and the streaks of gray in his beard. Balthazar continued to, uh, to the st waiting stage. He stopped there, tapping one finger on the edge of the podium, quietly down the rest of the room before speaking. We gather here tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of each and every one of you who completed the mast. As you leave the Institute and enter Alenia, carry the lessons you have learned with, with you. Do not be fooled into thinking that agelessness means immortality. You all are the strength of our great country. It all depends on your contributions in the decades ahead. There was polite applause from around the room. Balthazar waited for silence before he continued. Madara might not be the world you know best, but we hope now we have given you the tools to call it home. Nightingale didn't wait a moment more than she had to. As soon as her father stepped down from the po uh, platform, she hurried to meet him. He didn't seem surprised, only a little wary. Yes, Nightingale. I... She shuffled uneasily from foot to foot, her tail twitching behind her. She spent just a few more seconds getting up the courage, then it all came tumbling out in a rush. I'd like to join the Demiurge. I know it's a little strange to have a member of the royal family join the one who, uh, ones who protect them, but Dominique did it before he died. Kufu will vouch for me. Now that you've let Rook join, we could totally train together. Balthazar silenced her with a raised hand. I'm sorry, Nightingale. That's just not just as impossible. He turned away from the table, uh, the, the table as though to make for one of the doors. She probably should have let him go, but he, she didn't. Wait. She reached out, catching him by the, by the arm. Several people watch, uh, watching gawked, and nearby conversations fell to a hush. I know you're skeptical of, of anything that might put me in danger, but that's the exact opposite of what this is. You didn't think uh, being better uh, prepared was putting Dominic in danger. Balthazar twitched slightly at the mention of his dead son's name. Your older brother was twice the warrior you are, his expression hardened. He had the wisdom and skill of many years before he qualified. You are a child. Speak to me again in half a century, and we will see. But Rook. Rook wasn't accepted into Demir training. Balthazar's voice dropped into a dangerous whisper, and he leaned down, glowering at her. He saved your life from an earth lower during the mass. That broken cube, you should have run, but you didn't. I've named him your personal knight. Knight? But you're important to this kingdom, Nightingale. I feel it necessary to keep you protected at all times. Do not resent your limits. Each of us ha have a role to play, and this is yours. Nightingale ignored the stairs, glaring stubbornly up, up at him. My real family didn't love me because I was useful. They loved me because they were my family. Balthazar si sighed, counting quietly under his breath for a few seconds. Your real family is here. Don't think a few years on Earth ch uh, changed the eternity here in Alenia. Your mother, mother and I don't, didn't love you less. She turned her back on him, tail swishing furiously. Could have fooled me. Nightingale stalked away, returning to the, her table with frustration in every step. Hey, Zeke. She didn't sit down. Zeke looked up from the table behind a freshly lit cigarette. Yeah? That uncle of yours, the one that throws the crazy razors? Yun? Yeah, Yun. Nightingale leaned closer to him. Is he doing anything tonight? Could he get us in? Yes and yes. Zeke briefly uh, glanced around. When he couldn't find an ashtray, he just exchanged his cigarette against the tablecloth. I'm, I'm not sure that's wise, Nightingale. Rook said flatly. Your, probably ex uh, your family probably expects you to remain here. Nightingale tensed and turning away. I don't give a damn what they think of uh, what they expect. Zeke raised an eyebrow at the comment but let, let it go. All right. Zeke rose from a slouch. I was planning on heading over there when this one got too boring anyway. Rook rose as well, looking down. I guess I'm coming too then. I am your knight. Hermione remained where she was, staring at the table. She Did she expect them to leave her, there, uh, leave her here? Instead, Nightingale rested one hand briefly on her shoulder. You coming, Remy? I bet we'll have way more fun at a real party. Um, yeah, she jumped at her feet, almost knocking over the, over the chair. I mean, yes, that sounds fantastic. Together, they left the graduation party behind. Yun's party. Remy could, could barely find the words as she stared up into the sky, following a dozen different sharp stone lines. They seemed to be made of white marble shooting upward uh, t according to a bevy of, a car of arcane rules. So these are the white spires, huh? And you guys just live here? You get used to it, Zeke grunted, already smoking. The guards are the worst. Damn portal to earth means we've got more than almost anywhere here, anywhere else. 
Grounds were elegant, white granite surrounded uh, with careful groomed gardens. Remy could smell the flowers, even if most had clothes against the chill. And Jan's throwing a party here? Nightingale sounded like her anger had been festering on the trip over. In the same place that holds the portal? There was a little reference in her voice at that last word. Each of them had used that portal, and all of them understood its value. No portal, no kingdom. Yeah, but this place is way bigger than it looks. It's not like he's having the party in the portal chamber. He gestured down at the ground with his cigarette. It would be impossible for us to get anywhere near it. Yun holds his party near the white vaults. They say that they go deeper than the spires go high. I don't think anybody knows how, knows exactly how far. Can you hear the music? Remy asked, listening. There was steady ba uh, bass so loud it came through our feet, accompanied with flashing lights uh, from up ahead. They turned a corner and were suddenly face to face with a pair of surly looking men on either side of a locked door. Zeke, they sprang, uh, sorry, it was surly looking men. Zeke, they sprang into action, flinging the door open. Lady Nightingale, a pleasure, the guard said as they passed. Lights flashed, music blared, and dancing bodies filled the air with sweat. Uh, where the arson graduation party had tables and three-course meal, Neon had a full-service bar and whole tables packed with drinks. Nightingale approached the bar and downed a shot of something colorful and glowing. Remy resisted the urge to do the same. If Nightingale reacted to bad news the same uh, the way some of Remy's Earth friends had, she would probably be grateful for a sober friend in a few hours. The party was every bit as awesome as Zeke had led them to believe. The music was refreshing, uh, refreshing throwback to the music from Earth, loud and abrasive. It provided a break from the choral and classical pieces some students had practiced in the Institute. Remy was startled out of her amusing by a hand on her shoulder. She jerked away defensively, but it was only Nightingale grinning down, uh, down at her with glowing blue teeth. Zeke just got word. We're wanted upstairs. Nightingale uh, set her glowing cup on the table. No big deal, Remy replied. Whatever we gotta do, I'm right there with you. As they headed upstairs, Remy saw that uh, Yun Zhong wasn't like the Arston family. He hadn't erected a throne, instead he chose a table at the center where he could participate in, a, in the drama as easily as observed. Remy spelled him before she saw him, like every kind of liquor uh, Earth had ever invented and many others it hadn't. Yun separated himself from several attractive groupies, uh, shoving... Uh, out of, out of the booth, Yun was taller than Zeke and wore an open jacket over a lean, muscled chest. His hair st was styled and his face clean-shaven, and crystal jewelry glowed faintly around his neck. Nephew, Yun smiled, open opening his arms wide. I didn't expect you tonight. Graduation wasn't good enough? Zeke nodded. No one in Midara can throw a party like you. True words that were never spoken. Your friends look lovely. He waved a hand with several glittering rings uh, toward them, though he hardly seemed to see anyone besides Zeke. You kids enjoy yourself. I would stay, but uh, I am needed elsewhere. She, uh, Zeke didn't say anything until Yun had walked off. I don't think I've ever seen Yun care about uh, something more than his parties. He's been trying to uh, get me to come to, uh, come party with him ever since I got here, but now we're, that we're all here. Remy kept her voice a whisper. I could follow him. Zeke nodded. Could you do it without getting caught? If Ryan's got himself into trouble, the family should know. No problem, Remy cracked her knuckles. I'll be right back. Remy vanished into the party. She slumped her shoulders and tucked her wings in as she moved with the crowd. With so many flashing lights and so many people, it wasn't, it wasn't hard to disappear. She made it to the open door and strode through. Remy had not come to Madara to a kind family, as Rook had done. She hadn't even come back to a well-meaning but callous, seeming nobility as Zeke and Nightingale had. Remy's father had loved her all right and had taught her uh, what he believed were the necessary skills to survive. Sometimes that, mean, that meant hiding in plain sight. Despite the security of the white vaults beneath, uh, the, uh, the halls around Yun's party were deserted. Remy hurried around uh, the sound of retreating footfalls as quietly as possible. She memorized the hallways as she went, making a mental note of each twist. Soon enough, the footsteps stopped. Remy stopped, straining her ears. It took a few seconds of concentration before the faint sounds resolved into voices. You're sure? Yun asked. Absolutely. The second speaker was female, brusque, and urgent. We don't know how far he got, uh, could have gotten by now. And you're certain someone didn't just forget to shut the door? Unfortunately, there was a hint of disgust in her uh, woman's voice. 
We don't make mistakes like that. What do we do about it? Should we send down a patrol, call for the Demiurge? No, sir. I suggest you strengthen the guard on every known exit. In the unlikely event he can find his way out, we'll make sure he doesn't steal anything. Yen grumbled angrily. You called me away from an important gathering to tell me that we don't have to do anything. He raised his voice to an angry, half-drunken shout. All right, Captain, keep on doing the job my pa family pays you for. Remy turned, hurrying back to the party before someone could find her where she could, uh, shouldn't be. She found someone, uh, found everyone waiting just inside and explained everything that she just heard. You know what that means, right? Nightingale asked. Rook ground. Please don't. Nightingale ignored him. If there's some sort of thief down, that, down in the white vaults, that means somebody should go after them. Somebody like us. Rook folded his arms. Or maybe we should just tell, let the guards do their thing. This is stupid. You mean awesome, Nightingale said, nudging him in the in the ribs. Admit it, you want to go down there and do some real venturing. Rook hesitated, looking away from her. I, I don't, I do not want to go. It just seems like a knight should, or sorry, I do want to go. It just seems like a knight should discourage his princess from making risky moves. Nightingale rolled her eyes, turning to on Zeke. What about you? You know what's going to happen to us when tonight's over. It might be years before our parents let us out from under their thumbs. Give it a few decades, you might be married off to some cream puff to seem a, a stupid political alliance or whatever. She rested one uh, hand on his shoulder, smiling at him uh, with her huge green eyes. With the lights flashing all around them, they practically glowed. You don't want that shit, Zeke. You want to live. She gestured down the hallway. Remy had come uh, from with a wild smile on her face. Let's go catch us a thief. Sure, Zeke said. I know the vaults pretty well. Nightgill turned to Remy. You in? Obviously. Remy grinned back. The stories of what's down there. I wonder if the, if, wonder if the rumors are true. Zeke gestured off to nearby hall, uh, to a nearby hallway, ducking low so Yun wouldn't see him as he slipped back into the party. All right, follow me. And there's Yun Zhang here. Got his open jacket and glowing jewelry. Dungeon delving. Pretty sure the secret door is this way, as he peeked inside, opening it only a crack. That's what you said three doors ago, Nightingale cr uh, crowded close, shoving a glowstone through the opening. Zeke knows where, to, where he's going, Rook rumbled from somewhere behind. Like the way we've been ignoring all the doors marked vault entrance, staff only. Zeke glared back at him. Those signs are for, idi for the idiots who break into vaults. Every one of them is filled with traps. Lots of them had guards, too. Remy offered, matter-of-factly. Zeke probably did, doesn't want anyone to know wh where we went. You're damn right. Zeke kept his voice low, squinting through the dark with only Nightingale's glowstone to light the space for him. There are more ways in, though. The safe ones aren't marked. The ones that can't be used to get out won't be guarded. He pulled back, glancing one last uh, last time around the hall to make sure nobody was watching them. Then, he, uh, when he didn't see anyone, Zeke put himself in front of the door, turning to face them. Antoinette! Uh, took me down this way once. When you start sliding, get on your back and don't lift your head. The chamber beyond was exactly as he remembered it, about 20 square feet, with uh, with worn carvings on all, on all the walls. The floor was a steep ramp pointing towards a huge opening in the far, far wall. The slope beyond was low enough that even Remy wouldn't be able to fly up. Last chance to back out, Zeke said. Nightingale took a step into the room, sliding one of her flats along the slick rock. She jumped as the slick rock almost stole her balance. Zeke reached to steady her, but there was no need. Nightingale caught herself, glaring at the floor. I'm going. Uh, that means I am too, Rook added. Unsurprisingly, it was Nightingale who moved past him first. Race you down. She jumped, sliding, down, uh, sliding along her back down the slope and lowering her head like she was riding down a water slide. I'm coming. Remy needed no more encouragement. Uh, leaping feet first into the thick stone uh, after Nightingale. Rook followed, though more carefully, lowering himself, uh, lowering himself slowly on the flat part of the room, then pushing off. Zeke stepped out into the room and shoved towards the drop, where air whipped his hair about as he slid, gathering some grime and dirt along the way. True to, to his advice, the ceiling blurred as he flew by, dangerously, dangerously close to his face. After what felt like minutes in darkness, Zeke saw the first uh, flickers of light. The top of the chute opened as it descended, revealing an uneven, ca uh, uneven cave, a ceiling of stalactites and rough stone. Um, 
the rock itself seemed alight, flickering with a thousand different colors. He could just pick out the shapes of glittering geodes set into the ceiling above him. His family still di didn't know what magic powered the lights, but they seemed to change every time he looked away. They were a quiet reminder that his family might occupy the white spires, but they didn't understand them. The chute leveled out near the bottom. Zeke dug his heels sharply into the side of the shaft, bracing himself. Instead of slamming into his friends, he came to a reasonable, graceful stop. Is everyone all right? He asked, getting to his feet and brushing the worst of the slime away. Give me a sec. Nightingale tore at her dress, expanding the rip until it started to spread. Zeke felt his face go red and turned away, grateful for the comparative darkness. He walked past Nightingale as she finished transforming her priceless gown into a makeshift skirt. He squinted against the gloom, trying to remember what he'd been taught about navigating the vaults. He didn't remember much, aside from what Antoinette had told him. Uh, his sister had mentioned that uh, that that there were many places that were considered too, far too dangerous to go, and others that were much were much less dangerous. The deeper you go, the da more dangerous it gets. He he at least remembers something she had told him. I'm not sure where the thief could have gone. Probably down. The best chance of finding something valuable to steal is always down. Rook grunted. You sure we can handle the monsters down here? He was already armed, glaring off into the gloom of a nearby cave, uh, carved stone archway. Probably. Zeke didn't sound uh, confident. Not even my father saw the bottom of this place before he died. The Zhang family keeps guards here for a reason. I hear something coming. Remy called, suddenly alert. Get ready. Nightingale was beside him suddenly, bearing uh, her steel at the dark. After tonight, anything that comes for me is dead. Not ready for the demiarch my ass. Continue to a dangerous path, page 33. That is it. Uh, there we go. A dangerous path. You quickly gather your senses as creatures amass up ahead. Loose patches of rock are scattered about the ground, and broken floor stones give way into pits that descend out of, out of sight. The perilous walkway feels as if it could collapse at any moment. Across from you, eerily lights from the stones above cast pale, pale shadows under a hooded figure looming in your path. One conditions. An adventure ends their turn on the blue exit. Lose condition. All adventures are defeated. There is one blue loot token, one blue exit. Uh, there's one uh, animate and three cave sickles. So this is pretty much the warm up because there's not really any, you don't have to worry about any totems, uh, no objective, fancy objective tokens or anything like that. It's just straight up kill some things and get to the exit. You don't even have to kill everything. You just got to get to the exit. Tip. Urgency tokens. Encounters will trigger a loose condition if players earn too many urgent urgency tokens. Urgency tokens force the players to keep moving. This prevents players from idling for too long. As soon as the players have four or more urgency tokens, all adventures are defeated. This will lead to a loose condition on the current encounter. These can get uh, pretty iffy. It usually is iffy if you're trying to do everything in a uh, if you're trying to do everything in a uh, encounter uh, as safely as possible. That's usually when you're going to get urgency tokens, to be honest. But for this, we probably don't have anything to worry about since our opponents are within attack range. So, um, so one of the things that changed since, like, you know, the previous encounter that we've done, and you know, the layout's been changed, is supposedly every uh, everything has been scripted um, through chapter two. Um, I noticed some mistakes in some of them that I um, that I attempted, but I think for the most part. seems to be working. Also, it accidentally grabbed my item from that. Uh, usually if there's stuff on the board when you hit load page, it clears it, so that's why it's grabbing stuff. Uh, one thing I, one change I do not like them doing is making it so, making it snap so much. Uh, so I'm gonna put the cards over here, I guess, to make it a little bit easier to work with. All right, uh, a few things they also changed is it doesn't seem like it automatically places the um, intelligent monster cards anymore, so there's that as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and do this one because this one's pretty quick. Uh, so we're just going to knock this out real quick. So, okay, three cave sickles. And one animate. The animate's the only thing that's going to be really a, a threat here. Uh, so we need to get some initiative cards. Uh, but the figures are already out. There's an animate. Where's the other cave sickles? There they are. All right, cave sickles got. All right, we need to place our units. 
they have to be along the left side there. Nothing really too special here. There's some pits, but there's not really anything out here that can do any uh, pushes or pulls, so there's not really any dangers. Uh, we definitely want Rook in front, because he is a monster. I'll put you in the back and get you situated. So against cave sickles with all the throw items that we have, we should be good. This will also be a good opportunity to take advantage of our utility cores that we now have access to. Because we need to stock up on items. Alright. Um, okay, I think that's everything. Uh, everyone's at three. Oh, not yet. You're not at three. There you go. So everyone's at three stamina. As you can see, it's all set up. Um, I'm just making sure convictions are set to the, what they need to be set. Uh, white casting die. Okay, yeah, it looks like we're good to go. And you have, what, four armor? Yep, four armor. 18 health. Uh, you sh yeah, you have 15 health. You have the lowest health. You have 16 health. And you have 20. All right. Okay. We'll see how r durable Remy does in this, because usually my Remy is a clothy. All right, so what we're going to do here... Oh, um, so they have all the... Um, uncommon rares and stuff all you have to do is click the button you want and you'll get it and then whenever you need to draw you just click draw and it'll draw it'll shuffle and then draw it for you and put it on this little um this tableau here and it'll gradually just filter to the right so it's pretty helpful all right so we're gonna go ahead and hit reset and get started and also just checking a few things making sure the positions are correct because this is the this is still a beta oh by the way they're considered in beta now all right, uh, so our first person is going to be Zeke. All right, uh, so Zeke is going to go ahead and spend one stamina to go ahead. So Banish Knowledge usually costs two, but if you cast this on somebody else, it only costs one. So I'm going to cast that to get, uh, give haste to Rook. We're going to make him a very speedy monster. That's the plan. All right, and then he's also going to go ahead and flip the utility core. Same, same as always, I'm just going to shuffle this and, pick, and draw the top card. All right, throwing knives, good. We'll save those. Um, also, currently our level, our loot level is still mundane, just to point out. That's why I grabbed the mundane deck. All right. Um, so main thing is we're, we want to get as much loot and experience as we possibly can from this. All right, so next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and spend a stamina to move. Uh, this is Zeke here, so uh, one, two, three, four... Five, six, no, five, six. Let's see, sorry, it's one, two, three, four, five. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, I could use another stamina to try to get a little bit closer, but it's not gonna get me close enough to actually do anything. Uh, so I can't get in range to do anything special, so that's it for that. Uh, goes to Remy next. So Remy's got her three stamina to play around with. Um, I'm going to have to say, now, uh, much like the, the mast, or the, the gauntlet, uh, more than likely we're not going to get a refresh until the very, very end. So that's something we're going to have to kind of keep in mind. So with that, let's go and spend an initiative to go ahead and move. Uh, for the most part, these cave sickles are going to close in on us. Um, we just, I'm just going to keep just out of sight their uh, attack range so they only attack us once. So one, two, three, four, five six i think you have six movement yep you have exactly six uh oh, i think the only person that doesn't have six movement is nightingale who has seven everything that everyone else is a bit of a slow poke all right um and then takes care of that goes to rook so rook has so usually you do not gain you do not gain um your, you don't get uh stamina points at the start of your phase Yeah, so resolve, yeah, resolve abilities, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so usually during the fir your first refresh phase, you don't get stamina points, but you still get your status phase. So I do get one stamina point from the haste uh, effect that we have active. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one stamina that we just got to go ahead and move. And go one, two, three, four. Five, six. I'm going to get in some of that diff uh, hindering terrain there. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend two stamina uh, to Courage Stifle and try this out. 
So, oh, we don't even have dice. Let's get some dice out. I need uh, purples and whites. In fact, we'll just do it like this. We'll put this stuff out here. And they're going to need some oranges, some teals. Uh, that, that, and that should do it for now. I'll put those down here. In fact, we'll put all you guys down here. That'll be easier to keep track of. All right. That sounds good. So the monster stuff will be here, and we'll put our stuff over here. I think that's the best bet. All right. So uh, my casting die is going to be a white die because it's based off either my blunt weapon or my medium shield, which has finesse. Um, I can empower if I want to, uh, but I'm not going to. Um, at least not this time. So we'll go ahead and just roll it. Two, and then we add six, the, the spell power, which is six. So it's going to be eight in total. And then I'm targeting the red one. Uh, it gets a four, which fails. So... As it reads, it does a total of times two my armor value. My armor value is four, so it's going to do eight damage to this red cave sickle, blowing it to pieces. And that is it. I could do a MF42 and try to shoot the other one, but I'm not going to. Um, instead, it's going to go to Nightingale's turn. So Nightingale has seven range, thanks to the True Flight Arrow, so we'll see if we can do anything with that. But for right now, I think we need to do some... Well, first we're going to go ahead and flip our Utility Core and get our fancy little item. All right, got some soda pop. And then we're gonna go ahead and spend one stamina to move. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's my that's the range of my bow, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop there and go ahead and shoot. I did move so I don't get the plus one to attack. I'll go ahead and uh, grab these dice. We'll see what we can get happening here. So we'll spend all the stamina there. Also, I'll go ahead and use up my mend. And get ourselves some heal tokens. Uh, now, if we don't get a refresh, these heal tokens will carry over to the next one. All right, let's make a range attack. All right, one and seven. Um, if I have combo archery with the quiver, I can exhaust this to reroll a die. I will use it to reroll that one. And I got the same result. So eight in total, that does hit. And I'm going to do two physical damage plus one from the starburst. Uh, so it's going to do three damage to the uh, purple one. All right. Could have been better. Um, I could do fight drive, but I'm not going to. I'm going to save that for a little bit. Uh, we got cave sickle one through three now. Uh, we'll start with the, the purple one. So the purple one's going to go one, two, three, four. It's going to shoot at Rook because he's the only target. Uh, it's going to shoot into hindering terrain, it's gonna, so it's going to be minus one to the attack. Um, I do have a dodge, but I'm going to go ahead and save it for right now, just in case it moves into melee. Actually, I have a spare. Actually, I'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and dodge. It's fine. So dodge. All right, failed. So it doesn't matter. My defense is ten. Um, there is only one nearby cave sickle because I killed the other one, so it's just going to be a white and orange. Uh, seven minus one is six. That is definitely a miss. And then it's going to move in one, two. Uh, let's see. It says it moves towards uh, move to be adjacent to the opponent with the most damage. It's a tie. Uh, so it's going to be. It's actually going to go after Zeke. Yeah, it's a tie for. It's not. It doesn't say closest. It says a uh, the one with the most damage within movement range. So one, two, three, four, five six um so that actually is going to pr uh provoke a break attack maybe but i think you have to have a melee weapon for break attacks so i'll check that real quick to make confirm it yeah do 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 uh, it finding if they figure leads to support that the figure may not ever unlike other actions and break results. Um, 
making break attacks, make an attack of their equipped weapons. Okay, so yeah, you do still get a break attack with ranged weapons. Uh, you can't flank with one, a uh, ranged weapon, that's the situation. So I'll go ahead and make my attack with uh, Night... Uh, oh, actually, sorry, I'm... Why was I looking at Nightingale? That's not Nightingale. That is Remy. Uh, Remy will be able to do her thing. So we'll go ahead and take her... Uh, we'll swing our axe at it and see if we can finish it off. Uh, nine in total. So that's a hit. It's going to do one damage plus one for every shield. So it's going to do three damage in total, which will finish it off. So the reason why he went after Zeke is because it's he was furthest up on the initiative and within range. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So it is what it is. All right. And then the orange one has to move in. Uh, it goes one, two, three, four. I uh, can't shoot that one, but it can go after Remy. Actually, it says go for range for, for the nearest opponent. So it can go one, two, three, four, shoot across here. Um, all of them, all of, all of the other cave sickles are dead. So it's two white dice, minus one to the attack. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just let the attack go through. I, won't, I will not attempt to dodge it. All right, so that's a total of 11. Uh, minus one is 10. So it does hit, and every shield does one physical damage. So one, two, three. So it was, it's 10 attack minus 10 defense, so it's zero. And then the shields bring it up to three damage, and he has four armor, so it does zero damage. Goes to the animate. Uh, heal two, continue down. It's already at full health. Uh, can it move and attack someone within range four? No. No one's adjacent. No one's within an SOI, so it just sits there. All right. New round. All right, Rook goes next. Rook will gain, uh, he gets his three uh, stamina plus one from haste, so he goes up to five and refreshes this. Um, he's going to go ahead and spend two to go ahead and do courage stifle. Well, eight again. All right, let's see if he can resist it this time. Uh, seven fails. So yeah, it's 2 plus spell power, which is why it totals up to 8. Alright, uh, so far I haven't had, needed to do the Empower die. This does 8 damage to it, killing it. And then we just hit Draw here. It's going to shuffle and draw for us. 6 gold. So, 17. Not too shabby. Alright, next is... Uh, well, I'll go ahead and do movement next. 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six. Uh, seven, eight. This will probably force this thing to move up, which is fine. And we'll get in pre uh, prepared for that. All right, so far so good. Um, Rook's been just dominating. Um, so Nightingale uh, goes up to three. This refreshes. She'll spend one on movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just out of range. Uh, so she'll just stay there for now. All right. Uh, that will be it for that. Goes to Remy. Remy will get uh, three stamina and start moving. She'll spend one on movement and start going. One, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll go here for eight and spend an extra stamina. Let's see. One, two, three. And we'll spend one more stamina to get to here. Give it some extra targets. All right. Now be it for that goes to the animate next. There are no more cave sickles, so we can go ahead and just remove that. All right, goes to animate. Animate is gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Oops, sorry, actually I'll stay here. Two, three, so two, two people in range. It's gonna go for Rook first, because Rook has highest initiative. 
Uh, Rook will attempt to dodge using the defensive core. All right, four shields, bringing him to 14 defense versus his this teal and orange die. Uh, misses completely, and that should be it for that. Yep, it is. that is it for that. Goes to Zeke next. Zeke goes up to four initiative. He's going to go ahead and push forward. One, two, or sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. And he's going to spend additional stamina to go ahead and uh, apply haste. Uh, actually, he'll move two more steps forward because he might as well. And then he'll apply haste. Uh, he'll give haste to uh, Nightingale. All right, get that going. And then we get to a new round. Animate goes first. All right, so Animate, there is somebody with an SOI. Uh, cast the spell six, prioritizing the opponent with the lowest conviction without darkness. Uh, lowest, it's a tie between both Remy and Rook. Remy is furthest on initiative, so it's going to target her. So let's get her some purple dice. And roll her conviction. We'll see how we do. All right. Well, there's no way this thing will fail, but I'll roll it anyway. So four plus six is ten, and that's going to inflict darkness on her. So darkness is minus one defense and cannot dodge. Luckily, this will wear off after the encounter's over. But it's going to go ahead and beat us up now. Make a range 4 attack prioritizing the opponent with darkness, so it will. I can't dodge it. Uh, 6 is a miss, and then it's going to move towards the nearest opponent, uh, which is a tie. So it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and attack, uh, attack Remy. Uh, this time it uses an empower because it's a melee strike. I can't dodge. Alright, here's the big one. So 14. Uh, I have 9 defense, so it goes to 5. Every shield and book combo will do an additional 1, and every uh, star will do 2. So it goes from 14 down to 5, 6, 7, 8, 10 damage total. Uh, armor would bring it down to 8. We're going to say no to all of that and use our caresses once per encounter to ignore all physical damage dealt to us. Um, also, since we just dealt, uh, ignored all damage, um, that means this attack did zero damage, which means we can counter it. So I'm going to go ahead and spend my two stamina to go ahead and counter it. Usually it's one stamina, but only if you did it in response to a dodge. Uh, we didn't dodge, so it's just going to cost us two stamina, and we're going to hit this thing back. Or not. Well, we missed. All right. Well, that was it for that. Um, then it goes to Remy's turn. Remy will get three initiative back, or three stamina back. Uh, she will go ahead and attack and empower it. So I'll spend up all of her stuff. She can't really move away without provoking, so that's why we're just going to stick to this and hope for the best. Alright, so 9. This thing has 9 defense, so this does hit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust the um, War Axe, so now every... Uh, book gives plus one physical damage. So the way this is going to work is every starburst and every shield gives one damage. Um, right now we have nine attacks, so and the, that gets negated by the nine defense. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage in total. And this thing I think has three armor, so it's going to do five damage. So not too shabby. So five damage to the animate. Yep, I had three armor. And that is it for her. Yeah, and power dies really help a lot, especially against armor. Uh, goes to Nightingale next. And as always, when I'm recording, the cat wants to say hello. All right, uh, haste. So three stamina. I'm going to cap out five. I'm going to go ahead and spend. I'm going to go ahead and do my. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to stand in place. Uh, I'm going to end up shooting through an ally square, so it's going to be minus one attack. But since I haven't moved, it's going to be plus one attack, so it just evens out. Yeah, it's going to go through Remy's square. All right, so 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use Fight Drive, which will uh, be an attack. I'm going to go ahead and spend a stamina to empower it. So let's get this ready. All right, so that's a total of 12. Uh, that hits. Um, it has 9 defense, so it's going to be base 3 damage. Every 2 shields gives 2 physical. Every 1 star gives 1 physical. So, so 3 base, uh, 5, 7, 8 damage, it looks like. 8 damage in total. Um, so it's going to do 5 because it has 3 armor, bringing it to 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend three more, um, three more stamina to attack and empower it, just like before. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the quiver to re-roll the two. All right, so that's ten in total. All right, so ten in total, so base one damage, and then three damage, four damage. So it's only going to do uh, one whole damage. All right, and that's it for her. Uh, goes to Zeke next. Zeke will get maxed out here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use his both hand axes. Each of these will do, uh, these are physical attacks, so it's going to do three or less for each of them. But it's free attacks, so I might as well use them. All right, so five and six. Each of these get reduced by three because of the armor. So two and three, so five damage in total, which will put it at 16. Not too shabby. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend a stamina to move. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to provoke the attack. I, I, I'll just not worry about flanking. Uh, he needs two white dice. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the Empower die. I'm going to spend three stamina to Empower, then attack. So it brings me down to one. And we'll see what we get. All right, total of nine. That is a hit. And then every two shields gives us two physical damage. So two, four, so one damage in total. Uh, which is a little unfortunate because that means I can't do the I can't exhaust a re-attack again because I actually hit and didn't miss. That's okay. Uh, that it brings us down to Rook. Uh, Rook is going to go ahead and step here. Actually, no, he's not going to step anywhere. He's going to, going to go to five stamina. Spend two of it to go ahead and do uh, Courage Stifle. Roll the white die. All right, 10 in total. And it gets to roll an orange and a teal. It's pretty resistant to magic. All right, resist it. And then I'm going to go ahead and cast again, and this time, and this time I'm going to empower it with my warhammer. And here we go. All right. Well, I did pretty much the same. So I got two here and two books, which means it, and the plus six makes it ten again. Five, nine. All right. So I do ten magic, or sorry, eight magic damage to this thing, and that destroys it. All right. So with that, we'll go ahead and hit draw. Uh, five gold. So that puts you at 22. Um, I didn't move yet, so I can go ahead and just keep moving. So I will. One, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be it for that. Uh, Going to be a new round. We already killed something, so there's no urgency yet. Goes to Remy. Remy goes to three. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get there, am I? Oh, actually, I can. I can. I'll fly. So I'll have her fly. One, two, three, four, five, and search the blue chest. Blue chest has ten gold and two random consumables. Putting us at thirty-two. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm just making sure I did my math right. All right, and then shuffle, draw two. Got two throwing knives, awesome. You can always use more throwing knives. Uh, one of these does actually have to be put in the pack. So we'll put one in the pack here. 
Actually, we'll put the soda. Well, uh, we'll just put it like this. That's fine. All right. Uh, who goes after that? Goes Zeke. I'm just kind of looking over my options here. Yeah, actually, I'll put the soda in, in the pack. That's fine. Works for me. All right. And then for Zeke, uh, he he'll just spend the rest of his actions moving to the end, to the exit. And I'll end it. All right. Uh, each party member gains uh, one experience, and then you do Rumble in the Dark, which is just another encounter, uh, which we'll save for next time. I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was um, Madara. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And before I forget, actually this needs to reset to two. These actually should be twos, and then all of them should be at three experience now. All right. This is Madara, Depressed Eeyore. See you guys next time.